All right, sorry for the echo. Uh, I was forced inside after a cavalcade of errors. Uh, it started raining. I had an umbrella over the laptop, but the laptop itself uh, was not working too well. Uh, it wasn't syncing properly. It's sort of old. So anyways, uh, we got a question from the forum. Uh, how do you define masculine? It is important because you reference this concept excessively, uh, e.g. masculine likes masculine, but you don't say, to my knowledge, what you mean exactly. Please don't say it's something you know, notice about others. I remember you gave a response like this in one of your videos, but rather give a detailed description slash definition. A definition that can be used to determine if a certain person or activity is masculine or not by your standard, of course. So, uh, one of the reasons I didn't get to answering this question was because uh, masculinity or, or gender, for that matter, is a kind of personal experience, and it's sort of hard to objectively describe it. Uh, but nonetheless, we should describe it because, you know, we, we don't want to say, uh, you know, I, I dreamt that I rode an elephant to Paris. Uh, and there's no objective evidence, but I'll believe in it anyways because of my subjective internal uh, states. So yeah, there is, uh, masculinity or gender can be measured, uh, but we can't forget that it still is an experience. So as an analogy, uh, we have the concept of hot and cold. It's definitely an experience, but you can also measure on a thermometer uh, that 100 degrees Fahrenheit is more than zero degrees Fahrenheit. Now, as with gender, there's going to be a gray area. So 70 degrees, um, is that um, hot? Is it cold? Is it warm? Somewhere in between. But the point is, even if you have a continuum, even if you have a, a gray area in the middle, you, still have, uh, you can still have two extremes or two opposites, hot and cold, masculine and feminine. So what are the objective degrees of masculine? In chapter three of Guerrero, I wrote that gay men, well, I quoted uh, research that says that gay men on average are more feminine than straight men. Now, you could also, in fact, say feminine straight men. It doesn't really matter. The fact that you can differentiate and say these group of men uh, are doing things a little differently than most men, uh, that itself gives enough clues that there can be a cluster of traits that are associated with most men and a cluster of traits that are associated mostly with women. Uh, now, obviously, we share a lot of traits and we have a lot of things, uh, things in common, so, but the differences are the important parts. Uh, so let's focus on just one difference, just as an example. Uh, so rough and tumble play, so the fact that boys are more physical, they wrestle. Uh, this was pointed out by the first gay man, Carl Heinrich Ulrichs, who said that uh, gay, feminine gay guys, feminine gay boys, or pre-gay boys, uh, however you want to say it, they don't engage in rough and tumble play, just like girls don't engage in rough and tumble play. Um, now, how could you actually measure this? Well, you could go around, uh, have a clipboard, and try to see, uh, you know, are they physical, are they wrestling, are they on top of each other? And if that happens more with boys, then you could say it's a masculine sort of trait. Now, as a personal experience, uh, since we want to tie that in there, uh, as, you know, as when I was a young boy, uh, I certainly liked wrestling, and it wasn't anything sexual, I and mean, it was before puberty. Uh, it was just, I don't know, something, you know, something uh, to do. Uh, now, as, a, as an official tangent, I, I would like to, to wrestle with men today. Uh, and an official tangent on top of that, in the uh, Greco-Roman world, uh, the original Greco-Roman wrestling was done by men who were nude, uh, they slathered up in baby oil, and women were not allowed to attend or obviously wrestle. So I, I think we should bring that one back for old time's sake. Uh, now, I, I don't want to, in this video, give a list of all the masculine traits and feminine traits. I kind of do that in Chapter 3. Maybe we can do that another time, or if somebody has another book on it, that, that would be great. I just wanted to give a kind of methodology for how one would go by uh, finding these sort of traits. Now, one more broader category of traits uh, that's masculine, feminine, I got from this book, uh, The Essential Difference by Simon Baron Cohen. I've, I've quoted this book many times before. Uh, and, and the case that he makes is that 
on average, masculine men or ma uh, men masculinity has something to do with systematic thinking, and femininity has, a, on average, a little more to do with empathetic thinking. Uh, another little side note he he makes is that autism, which occurs predominantly in men is an extreme form of masculinity because it's an extreme form of systemizing. Now, what would be a, just a quick, simple example of, of uh, systematic thinking? Well, uh, the very fact that I say differentiate in a dichotomy between hot and cold. Now, that's not to say that you know women uh, cannot think up of this radical concept that there's a difference between hot and cold, uh, but that's that's kind of the, um, that's, uh, that's basically just systematic thinking, is thinking in terms of, uh, you know, like Legos. It's generally boys who like Legos, um, the engineering type stuff, the building blocks. Uh, yeah, autistic kids, a lot of them, what they do is they uh, stack blocks on top of each other, or they stack lots of items. Okay, so that would be systematic, so, sort of uh, um, building a system type, type deal. Uh, now, to finish off uh, this short little uh, answer, one, one question could be, is femininity, masculinity, uh, is gender cultural or innate? And, and obviously, as someone who says that sexual orientation, uh, there's a lot of culture behind it, uh, I can't obviously just dismiss it as, oh, it must be all innate. But on the other hand, even if we find that some cultural traits are different in other cultures. So what is considered masculine here is not masculine there. Uh, that doesn't mean, just because you can point to some of those, it doesn't mean that that sinks innate gender. In fact, I, I think the best evidence that there is such a thing called innate gender is that transgendered men and transgender women, uh, they actually go from being born male and let's say uh, you have a biological male who feels like uh, she's a woman. Well, but she's not encouraged, and especially in this culture, she's not encouraged to be a woman. So she, if the whole point is uh, masculinity is entirely culture, cultural, why is it that some men want to be women? And why is it that some women want to be men? Okay, what, because they were given the same cultural script as everybody else. In fact, the very fact that these people, uh, I mean, there could be some gender bending uh, transgender people, but a lot, of these, uh, a lot of these transgender people, they go completely the opposite. So it's not like, oh, I'll do a little bit of this and that. They go totally the opposite. So it could very well be that in most people's brains, uh, you have uh, the brain mapping for genitalia, and on top of that gets imposed gender. So if you have a penis, you get the masculine uh, brain state as well. Whereas with the more uh, with someone who has a vagina, they get a more feminine mindset. And in some people like gays, it gets a little shifted; they're a little more feminine. And in the transgender people, it gets completely shifted. So they have a penis, but they have the mapping for I want to be feminine. Okay. Oh, I, I forgot to add another thing about uh, the whole is uh, gender cultural or innate. Uh, on some level, it also doesn't really matter. I mean, the fact, fact is I learned to speak English, so I speak English now. I could have learned German, but I'm not going to learn German. I'm going to continue speaking in English because that's what I'm fluent in. Um, the other thing is, now, now obviously language is not just cultural. The type of language or the kind of language is cultural. Uh, the accent is cultural, but the innateness of language is not. Okay, so you can't teach a monkey like well, you can't teach a dog anything. You can't teach them the, the full human language, let's say that. Let's leave it at that.